Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programmes in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a programme about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colourful. Maximise the flavour. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimise the risk. So welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. Well, welcome back once again. This time, please put the channel zapper down if you've got one of those things, and don't look at the title which says egg substitutes. It's going to be okay. It's all right. In fact, fasten your seatbelt. Um, what I'm going to do is do just a simple little dish, first of all, show you a technique on how to use it, and then, of course, springboard once again into something a little bit more exotic, something where you can try and put that technique to place in your own kitchen and get going. Okay, egg substitutes. Um, is basically, you know, I used to think, when I heard of egg substitutes, I used to think, oh gosh, they put all kinds of chemicals in something and I don't want that. I want an egg as an egg and I just want to enjoy it. But you know with Trina, she's had you know, some difficulties with her heart and all that stuff. And so the egg yolk was a problem, whereas the white was okay. So I was really quite intrigued to find out that an egg substitutes, at least some of them, have got, in fact, just egg white. It's 99.4% um, it's egg white there, or egg product in it. And um, just a little bit of something else in there. And of course, I was really fascinated to know what that might be. Well, it's a little bit of a natto, which is the yellow coloring, which is also a natural coloring. But there's also just um, some little genius in there. It's, it's a derivative from seaweed. And I'm not sure just exactly what it does, and nobody will ever tell me. But uh, at least I've got to work with it. And if you've ever tried it, you might have actually thrown it into a pan, treated it like you normally would do scramble egg, and it terrible. And you say, never again. Well, have a look at this one and see whether this works for you. Okay? Come join me. Good, everything nice and warm. Um, first of all, uh, just uh, let's get um, a little bit of oil in, uh, in both of those um, plates, or not the oil in that one, we will use margarine in that one, but anyway, here we go. Um, mushrooms, um, now I get, I'll get round to the, the eggs in a second, but just to wrap it around a simple little idea. Now, I think it was about eight when my dad uh, actually said uh, to me and said to the chef in our hotel, go in and find out how to cook, and that's when I started about 50 years ago. So, and I remember the chef saying to me, see, you know, he was very French, he said, see these veins in the mushroom. When you use a butter, then the butter soaks into the veins. Oh, and it is lovely, it's round and beautiful. And, and I remember receiving that, but he said, always put a little lemon juice in there too. And that really stuck with me. Now, this is what we do with this one. Just take the stalk out and loosen it. Now put these two um, in just a little of that oil, and that, that, that's a little olive oil with just a touch of toasted sesame oil in it, you know, standard stuff and just lay that in the pan that's about medium heat. And then take the lemon. You see, because lemon does cut back somehow on the fat. But I, I used to think, well, I'll have the fat and the lemon, and that would really taste great. Now, if you can do without the fat altogether, the big question on my mind was, would the lemon do it? Would the lemon be OK? So we tried it. And fantastic things happened. All right, so what we're doing here is just, uh, just screwing that that lemon into there so that you've got plenty of juice and it's all in one place with a sharp little spout so that you can direct it exactly where you want it. So, um, we need about half a teaspoonful of lemon juice in the top of each one of those caps. So it just sits there. Now the heat underneath that is coming underneath and it's going to brew that lemon juice and sort of simmer it inside the caps, which results in it permeating every morsel of the flavour of that mushroom. All right, then, um, just a little bit, where's it gone? Oh, here we are. Um, what we call the Creole torpedo. This is the cayenne pepper, and just a touch of cayenne pepper, also with mushrooms. Just remember, lemon juice, cayenne pepper. 
red mushroom seems to bring out a kind of field flavor if it's missing. Not too hot, you really won't taste it, but it's just a little just bite in there. Okay. All right, so there we go, and those are doing just fine. Now, over here, just a few bits to get cracking. Here is an English muffin, which, um, having come from England, I was amazed because there weren't such things as English muffins. They didn't look like this anyway. Uh, but they've got there now, so. Um, they're called crumpets, and then we'd, we'd, they'd go with just on one side and smothered in butter, of course. Um, so that's toasted, and then here, I've got a piece of Canadian bacon. Now, around my home, what I like to do is to have Canadian bacon in a block and then keep it in, you know, one of those little bags. And I find that, that way I can measure and, and get it just the right kind of thickness that I want. And I just want one ounce um, per, um, per each one of these muffins at the moment. Okay. Here's another thing. And this time, it, it, a rather neat thing to show you. I'm going to use that larger. Now, this is uh, this large piece, or the end piece. I'll use something else later. But this is a skimmed mozzarella cheese. Huh? And uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to, to cut um, mozzarella cheese like this, but if it, see how it, that tears with a knife blade through there? Right. Well, this, this is a knife blade which, which actually you can cut right the way through, and it releases it as it goes. So this means that you, can, you should be able to cut thinner slices easier than you would otherwise. All right, so two slices. So it's uh, quite simple. There we go. And two muffins in there, everything going fine. All right, now let's have a look at the egg substitute and see what happens there. Um, just not oil, but just a little bit of, of um, polyunsaturated margarine on the top. I, I did use butter initially because butter has this charming quality to it. When it starts to go brown around the outside, you know it's exactly the right temperature for eggs to coagulate. Well, that's fine, and, and it adds that little buttery flavor, but then you've got butter around, and that's a bit of a problem for me. So um, it just should be blistering a little bit in the pan, and shake it thoroughly. Always shake the, this product thoroughly, and then dump it all in at once. Just stir it around like this. Now, now, normally, if you're making scrambled egg, if you're like me, and you, <laughs> I love making scrambled egg, um, you dive into that and start to, you know, shovel it all around and get the eggs to coagulate evenly. Well, in this case, you've got to control your patience just a little bit and, and just hang over it for about 30 seconds. And what I do is, I, I, rather than just sort of look at it, I just put in about one eighth teaspoonful of salt and some freshly ground black pepper, you know, both maximizing the flavor always. And just wait for it to start getting sort of disturbed, like the swamp creature is sort of coming out here. Just little bubbles should start to sort of move. Okay. When that starts to happen, and uh, my, oh dear, those muffins didn't brown quite as much as I wanted, so put them back. Um, you st then you push it into the center. Now you see what's happening here? It's set up just a little, and now, and this is so important if you're going to enjoy this. You start to pull it into the center. Works fairly quickly, pulling it up. But, and don't worry, it'll be OK. <laughs> and when you've got it like that, it's at a stage called baveurs. Now then, just put it to one side. Don't keep on doing it until it's completely done, because you want to keep it just to one side. Um, and it'll be just fine. All right. Now, um, on this one. I I don't want to burn it, so pop that up. <laughs> Short order cook again. Um, and then turn the mushroom upside down, and you see it steam bursts. You see how beautiful that looks on there? Now it steam bursts underneath, and everything is going just fine. Ha! Never put anything sharp into a toaster. Um, in fact, a pair of tongs are usually quite good with muffins, aren't they? Kind of, whether your toaster's like that, you can never reach into it. All right. Um, here is a broiler unit. So what we'll do is just simply set it on a broiler. And you can do all number of these, you know. For brunch, it's just sensational. Drop onto a hot muffin, uh, these two little pieces of, of um, Canadian bacon, and spoon come out. Eggs. Now, the eggs are nice and moist here, all right? So, so just drop those, that good spoonful of... <laughs> And I, do you know what I'm smelling at the moment? Guess, guess. I'm smelling 
the freshly ground pepper on that one. Look, look. All right. Now, it's going to look something like, not that I care, really, Eggs Benedict. I refer to Eggs Benedict as edible pornography. <laughs> Um, but that was when I wasn't really thinking about being polite. And um, so you just drop that on the top. Okay, now that looks pretty sordid, doesn't it? But you take this um, small thin slice of the low-fat mozzarella cheese on there and lift it up and stick it under the broiler. And so if you've got the broiler ready, just gently place it on there, about four inches away. Should be just about right. And, um, yes, now, uh, oh yes, <laughs> uh, I'd I like to place on top of this uh, instead of, well, th there are two things you can place on top of it. One is a green onion, and you can cut that green onion in thin slices like so, and that can decorate it, and it's quite a decorative shape. Um, or parsley, chopped parsley, but very much so paprika, because paprika will give you that charming sort of red and green appearance, which is just right. Ah, the, the one on the left is, it, can you get in the oven with me? Um, see the one on the left is doing nicely. Why isn't the one on the right? <laughs> How extraordinary. Um, thank you. Well, good. That's the way it is. And we just bring this down. Now look at that. Look at this one here. Well, it's all right. The other one's just going as, as, we, as we look at it. Um, take this up then. And, hmm, 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 oh, I know. Here we go. With, with a pair of tongs, doesn't that look neat? See? Matter of fact, it's wonderful. And a little dusting of parsley over the top, and a little shake. Do you think you could do this? I mean, it's not too intimidating, is it? Um, a little bit of parsley around the plate as well. Looks good. Okay, let's compare that and uh, look at that versus... Eggs Benedict. No, well, not versus, because, you know, I, I'm not into the versus thing, but at least it's, it's useful, I think, to compare. I think, oh, that's charming. Okay. All right. Well, you see, what we're trying to do is to show you that you can produce something that looks good, but it has to be treated in a slightly different way than we would normally do that. And, you know, with something where the fat's been taken out, it's such a good idea to get other flavors to mingle in and, uh, and really bring it up. Okay. 471 calories was the calorie value of an Eggs Benedict. This is down to 355, so not much, but at least 100 odd. Fat used to be 38, now down to 15. That's pretty good going. And saturated fat at 7. All right, that's because of the, uh, uh, of the bacon. All right, that gives me a 39% brunch egg dish. Not bad. Not bad. A little over 30%, but do you know you can make some adjustments to that. And cholesterol, 44, for down from 5 or 7, and sodium is up a bit because of the salt that there is in the Canadian bacon. Dietary fiber is about 1.3, but, you know, um, it's kind of fun, if, if you're counting those sort of things. But the big moment that always has to be is this. It is exploratory time. And so you just cut down into it. It does look a little bit like an Eggs Benedict, doesn't it? Um, when you cut down into the center, you can actually cut yourself a little wedge out if you're careful. And you see, that's the cheese and the egg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually almost indecent. Um, one worries a little bit about this when you're trying to develop dishes. Oh, but um, that is nice. Mm. Try that uh, for a bunch of people that you love. And, you know, the whole idea is that if somebody's at risk, there's no need to sort of give them dull food. You can spike it up and present it nicely. Looks good. Don't forget the springboard, which is take that idea and create your own. You know, come on, you know, be creative. Now, um, by way of sort of a creativity, I thought that what would be a good idea, we'd, we'd get the, the feeling of Asia and egg foo young, and make an egg foo young scramble where they sort of mix the two together and see whether that works, all right? Come on, I'll show you how it's done. Good, thanks so much for not switching off because of the egg substitute, and um, I know you haven't switched off because you're still watching. Um, here then in this pan, just a little oil. Just a, that, that's for Mike. If you don't know who Mike is, it doesn't really matter. Um, but just a half teaspoonful of oil in there. And then um, 
do you remember the time when we had a look at this wonderful flavor called Baoxiang uh, from Asia? Baoxiang means an explosion of fragrance. Well, he here's another way of looking at that. I said that you could springboard and use it in all kinds of dishes. Well, here we go again. Now this, if you'd have missed it actually on that occasion, this is 10 little fine slithers of ginger. And if you ever want to see what a ginger root is, by all means, don't buy the whole thing. You'd never use it. But just buy a small piece of this and it'd be kept in a little plastic bag. Or you, or you can actually wrap it in a brown paper bag and then put that in a plastic bag and keep it in the fridge. Keeps a long time. Okay, so that's root ginger, and it's very powerful stuff. So very thin slices. And normally, you know, I, I will make an extraction of that, but in this case, I want to keep it in the dish itself. And so because of that, it's a fine knife, and get down into it and slice it in very tiny, thin pieces. And then one little sliver of that has packs... It's what I call bright notes. When you take salt, fat, and sugars or something, you've got to get bright notes back in their place. And that little tiny piece there is amazing. It's got that hot taste to it. Really good. Really need to see it or to experience it. Okay. Now here, I've got um, a nice, large, fat garlic clove. And um, so that one, just to balance it up, down. <laughs> it's so large, I couldn't get it under. <laughs> And everyone's saying, isn't that marvelous? That's a beautiful one. You'll love that one. And couldn't smash it. So it just smashed down there. Just pass the blade through it. Because, I, again, I don't want any large pieces of it lying around. Good. And this is the three musketeers of this flavor. The flavor is just absolutely remarkable. Now, um, just cut the, the, um, the uh, bearded ends off there of, of green onions. And um, let's um, slice back from... Uh, the white ends there. And here, quite a crunchy little piece of it. I want to leave some of those ends uh, for something I want to do at the end there. Um, or, or the conclusion, rather than use that language too long. And there it is. Now, oil in the pan, heat it up, and then you can take those three things, the three musketeers of Baoxiang, and then drop those down. And immediately it starts to hiss. Immediately you get this incredible incredible aroma that comes out of it. Just wonderful. You said, remember what I was saying earlier that if you're going to drop fat out, you've got to get that flavor in, especially when it, you're dealing with eggs. And the egg substitute responds very well to this. Okay, so we'll just let that go over the stove. And then add these to it. Now, this is exactly the same uh, plant or vegetable, or fruit if you like, I suppose. Um, this, is, this is a caps capsaicin, which is um, capsicum. And this is the red pepper, and it's just cut up in small pieces. This is the same thing, but it has been bottled. It's called pimiento, when it's been roasted on the outside and peeled. Now, why? Well, it, it's again, it's a question of texture. So it's not only color, but texture as well. Now, you, you, you could probably say, oh, Graham, that's just ridiculous. And that's fine if you feel that. You should go ahead and do it. But just try just once and see whether you like the idea of the two kinds of pepper together. So we just place those into the pan too. So one will be crisp and the other one will be that. And it's colorful. Huh? Then a cup of thawed sweet corn. And you, you know, I always give you the, uh, all, all of the details so you can write it down. I hope you're writing it down. Then there's the book, you know, whatever way you like to do it. It's your choice. Then, ah! Good. Greens, gold, red, great. Um, a little bit of um, the Canadian bacon, because I, I, when I explore how to create some dishes, I like to think of the things about the greatest food that people enjoy so much and what they like about it and try and get into the thought. How about eggs and bacon on a rainy morning, you know, where you stop by on on the way to a construction site and you stop by at one of those little places for breakfast and hot steaming cup of coffee and eggs and bacon sizzling in the pan. <laughs> well, so I took that thought and said, all right, well, put some Canadian bacon in there and, and sizzle that around as well. Now I've got the ginger and the Canadian bacon and it looks terrific. Smells wonderful. Now for the assault. <laughs> you think the egg substitute was bad enough? Here it is, tofu. Um, 
Now, tofu is, is really glycine max. I was absolutely thrilled to hear that um, it was called max. Um, glycine, it, it, that's um, soybeans, by the way. And we actually, in the United States, um, that's where I am at the moment, um, grow um, three quarters of all the soybeans in the world. And uh, so we've got a lot of things to do with it. And this is one of the best. Firm, firm, look for it as firm soy, um, uh, or bean curd it could be called, tofu. And just stir that in. And what, what's happening when it reaches that pan, all the other flavors say, hi, you're welcome, you know, because tofu's got almost nothing to say for itself at all. It just sort of walks in and sort of, sort of stands there, you know. And all these colorful characters surround it and give all of what they've got in flavor to the tofu. But if the tofu goes on its own, it's pretty sad. You know, it never makes it in a party. You might experience that. All right, now, um, a little bit of the um, margarine again, the polyunsaturated margarine into this one, just to cut, make sure that we're right down on this saturated fat business. And, um, okay, and one little carton, which is about eight ounces, when you read the side of the carton, you'll see that it has the same protein content as whole eggs, same volume. Uh, so if you're a little bit concerned about, you know, is this just egg white and hasn't got anything to it? No, it's got a good deal of protein, which is excellent. So just let it stand there. You remember like it did before. And try and avoid uh, getting at it straight away. I know by habit that you'll try and do that, but try to avoid it. And then a little bit of that uh, salt and pepper. Very important indeed, even if you're just having it on its own. Then push it from the sides and pull into the center, okay? Just keep doing it. The more you throw yourself at it, if you whip it around quickly, like you would do eggs, um, it won't work. It, it'll break. But you see, keep on pushing it into the center, and it works very well. Keep it so it's moist there, then spread it out. Just spread it out a little bit over the bottom of the pan, and then take all of that cascading color, aroma, color, and texture. Pile it into the top. Put um, always uh, with these pans. Always get really good, you know, action going as quickly as you can to be able to get the pan clean. And there, there it is, stirred in together. So, get a plate, pull it. Oh, <laughs> Mum, I hope you're watching. Just now and again, you know, you know when you've really done something and you think it looks great and you want your mother to watch. <laughs> this, is, this is for two people, by the way, so, I mean, there's plenty there. All right. And there, little bit of rice on the side, if you're going to do it in European way, uh, or rice in a bowl, if you're going to do it Asian way. Yeah. Good. And now, let's compare this with the traditional egg foo young and see how we go. Now, the, the actual um, classic, uh, in this case, we'll have a look at in a moment, but doesn't that look nice on a plate? Hmm? Um, bl plenty of color and the rice butter side looks fine. Now, the egg foo young, which is the standard, of course, it would be served with rice as well and compared it in the same way, has a sort of beef sauce on it. That's really extraordinary. And, of course, whole, whole eggs. <laughs> This is the difference that you get. Um, not much in terms of the overall calories. So it's 245, but that's, that's a great number. That's with the rice. And then with the fat here, we, instead of 20 grams of fat, that's down to only 3 grams of fat, one of which is saturated. This is good stuff. So instead of a 63% calories from fat, we've now got down to only 12% calories from fat, teeming with flavor at the same time. Cholesterol only seven, and uh, 314 in sodium, which is a mere bagatelle, whatever that is, and then <laughs> three grams of dietary fiber, which is all the vegetables, which of course are just sensational. Okay, now, um, chopsticks, perhaps, if you, if you want to try it that way, and um, I'm going to try it with, with just, just the, oh. oh, you see, the egg substitute has met all those other ingredients. Mm. Um, 
It's so good. It really is. A little rice on the side, and you'll be delighted. How about that for a, for a neat brunch? You've got either of those two dishes could be a great brunch for your family. Don't forget, as always, you know, we're trying to minimize the risk because you care for people, and then maximize the flavor because you want to please people. We're such a mixture of the two, aren't we? Okay? Thanks so much for being with me once again. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.